Now let's proceed with the installation instructions for StarUML. StarUML is an open source tool, which means licensing wise, you could uh, install it and keep it on your machine for as, for as long as you'd like and continue practicing even after the course is complete. It is very similar to some of the industry wide tools. So look and feel mimics uh, an enterprise wide tool that could be used in a client organization, but it's quite straightforward and relatively easy to use. So you could also utilize the other online UML tools that we had uh, recommended in a previous video. Now let's jump into the installation. Uh, this is a Windows machine. And I would uh, presume that uh, the instructions and uh, in the, the installation is quite straightforward in the Mac version as well. I'm going to leave the default installation path and say next and install. And that's it, StarUML is ready and installed. I'll go ahead and open the tool. And that's it, StarUML is ready and installed for you to practice. When you start StarUML, this is the window you'll be presented with. And you can see that the class diagram is being presented by default. Now we want to draw a use case diagram. So let's change our uh, canvas to represent use case diagrams and get the toolboxes relevant to use case diagrams. The first step you want to do is file new from template rational. This would ensure that the diagram look and feel is similar to IBM rational tools, which is one of the tools that is used in the industry. So let's go with File, New from Template, Rational. This is an optional step. If you don't do that, then the default start UML look and feel would uh, come up. And uh, that doesn't look too different for us to be concerned. But let's just try out the IBM Rational look and feel. So I'll go with File, New from Template, and then click on Rational. Once I have the Rational view, then go to Use case view and then click on the diagram under the use case view folder. So once you have the rational view in place, you will have this explorer window on your top right. First go to the use case view folder and within it locate the use case view diagram with this icon right next to it. Now you'll be presented with all the tools you need to draw a use case diagram. Firstly, let's go ahead and create a frame. And since I'm drawing a use case diagram, I'll say use case view. So this is nothing but my system boundary. The system that I'm trying to build here is represented as the use case view here. And my actors would be outside of this boundary and my use cases would be inside the boundary. Let me start with creating an actor. Now keep in mind, this is not a drag and drop interface, but click and then click again in the canvas. So I click on the actor once and then click on the window here once and I'll have an actor which has the default representation as actor one. So I'll change that to customer, let's say. Okay, I'll create another actor, let's say, manager. Okay. Now I might want to create all my actors at once. So there's a handy shortcut that StarUML provides rather than you clicking on actor and then the canvas again each time. You could double click on the actor which would bring up this lock symbol. That way every time you click on the canvas you'll create multitude of actors. Okay. So all you have to do is double click on the actor symbol. The lock symbol would come up, which means that is locked to create an actor every time you click on the canvas. So I'm creating several actors here. Now, if I want to change to drawing use cases, 
if I click any other element, the lock disappears, which means now I'm back to the default mode of creating one object at a time. And now if I click multiple times, I don't see multiple use cases because the lock symbol is not enabled. So again, I do double click on the use case symbol. Now every time I click, I would create a use case within the canvas. Now I probably have created too many. So let's go ahead and see how you could delete uh, elements that you no longer need. So I'm going to select these three, use case six, three and four, hit the delete button. It disappears from the view here. But notice that use case numbers that we deleted, three, four and six are still available within your right side under the explorer. That's because we simply deleted it from our view and it still exists in the model itself. So it's always a good idea to delete it from the model as well as the view. So let's do a right click, delete from model. You could even select multiple by clicking on the shift key and then say right click, delete from model. So we are deleting the models which now have disappeared I'm sorry, we've deleted the use cases from the model itself, which have now disappeared from your Explorer view. So these that are still lingering here, we can delete it from the model by right clicking on the element that you no longer need. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing for my actors that I've created. I'm holding on to the shift key as I select each of the actors so that I can select multiple and then apply the action to delete all of them from the model rather than doing it one at a time. So right click, delete from model. And as you can see, the shortcut key is to do control delete. So delete would simply remove it from your view, from your canvas. Control delete would ensure that it's deleted from the view as well as the model itself. So it's gone in its entirety. Okay, now I have a clean sheet to start with. Now let's create a sample use case. Uh, let's say purchase tickets. Okay. Now, if you're listening to the video, um, While you're watching this video, it's always a good idea to pause, try out the things that I'm uh, While you're listening to the video for a demo session such as this, I recommend For a video demo such as this one, I recommend that you pause the video, try out the things that I'm explaining, rewind if needed, and then uh, play back so that you could follow along with me every step of the way. So that way, if you're stuck, you can um, watch the segment that you need to review again and then try it out again. So that way you can get practice hands-on as you're listening to me here. Now I have a sample use case called uh, purchase tickets. Now let me try to create an association. I'll choose directed association. And then it creates an arrow between customer and purchase tickets and you know that these two objects are linked because as i move the use case the arrow also readjusts the connection so you can tell that these are connected now let me just undo i'm going to hit Control z to undo until i get rid of the association itself i want to show you an error that uh, can come up at, at times if I start with the customer and try to uh, do the arrow, but I don't reach long enough, if I don't include both these elements, you will see an invalid connection error, which simply means that you haven't completed, you haven't completely selected the source and the target for the association. So as long as you include both, you will be able to see that. And you will see this visibility, uh, which you can uh, ignore. Just click elsewhere and that uh, would go away. And of course, you can use the same method to lock a certain element and then continue to apply that multiple times and selecting any other element would uh, get rid of the lock symbol. 
And the same concept would apply for any of the relationship arrows such as include, uh, extend, and, and so on. Okay. Also want to show you another technique to get your diagram to appear a little bit neat. Um, that would be to change the format of the line to rectilinear rather than oblique. So select the arrow or arrows that you would like to impact. And normally I tend to do this uh, at the very end of the diagram or a couple of times in between so that uh, I can do a control all, select all arrows and then apply this. But just to show you what this command does, let me just uh, apply this to the single arrow that we have created so far. If you go to format, line style, and then rectilinear. Again, format, line style, rectilinear. Or you could use the control L shortcut. You'll see that the arrows become rectilinear which means as you move the diagrams and as you have a lot of elements, the diagram rather than getting crisscrossed would appear a lot neater because your arrows are all right angled to each other. So that's a quick overview of Star UML and the basic elements for you to draw the use case diagrams. And in the next session, we'll take a look at a sample case and figure out how we could draw a entire use case diagram utilizing StarUML. And as I mentioned before, you could uh, do this using an online tool that we have recommended or Microsoft Visio or any UML tool. We're not uh, strongly attached to StarUML by any means, but uh, just use that because it's very solid and equivalent to an enterprise-wide tool that is used in industry. Now that you have some comfort level with the basics of StarUML and the UML diagram itself, why don't you take a look at a couple of uh, slides from the course and attempt to recreate them using Star UML. Here are a couple of proposed diagrams for you to uh, take a look at and then redraw them using Star UML just so you get comfortable with the controls and the general layout of Star UML and the UML use case diagram model within Star UML. Now if you want to pa pause the video for a couple of uh, minutes, I'm going to present uh, two suggested UML diagrams right here. So once you see the diagram, pause, go ahead and draw, and then come back, resume, draw the second diagram, and then that would wrap up uh, this video for you.